What's up guys, I'm Joel Dodge. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to set up bias effects on your iPhone or your iPad. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so I wanna say a few things before we actually get into um, me showing you how to do this. And the first thing is I'm using my Focusrite interface. It's a 4i4 third gen. Um, I'm not using the Jam Plus right now because I wanted to have a mouse on the screen and I can't use the Jam Plus and the mouse. I don't want to get into all the technical stuff right now. But I figured that the little bit of loss of tone that I'm going to get from using the Scarlet um, is worth it just so that y'all can see what I'm doing with the mouse on the screen. The other thing I wanted to tell you guys is that I'm using my Gibson SG and it has like a P P90 style pickup in the bridge position. And I just knocked my mic. <laughs> Sorry guys. Okay, so that's all the stuff I wanted to say in the beginning. So when you first get in here, most interfaces are gonna work immediately as you plug them in. At least that's been my experience. Um, but in case it doesn't, you can come here and you can click what channel you want it to play through. So like, for example, with with the Scarlet, I have four channels that I and I can click any of those to to be the one that's sending the signal. Right now, I have it through channel one, so I'm just going to leave that as is. And um, of course, you can go in here and change settings as you need. Um, everything is set up properly for for this tutorial, though. Um, okay, so that's the technical side of it. It's really simple. You basically just plug in. Um, I rarely have to go in there for anything. The cool thing about bias effects does a really good job of like simulating like a normal amp rig and and it's great. So for someone like me who's built a bunch of rigs, like real pedal boards and amps and all this stuff and put them together, um, it's like a very seamless process coming in bias effects to do it. And for those of you who maybe you've never um, never gotten the chance to build a real pedal board and rig, this is going to be a great place for you to like get used to doing that before you actually start buying real gear because <laughs> we all know that adds up really quick. Anyway, first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come and, and choose amp. Um, these are ones that are in bias effects. Um, I actually have bias amps and I have these ones that I typically use. Um, of course, you can use whatever you want, um, but this is the amp I usually like to start out with. So typically what I I do with this amp, um, I feel like the gain and master are set pretty well. Um, I like to boost the bass a little bit on here. Boost it, not cut it. <laughs> anyway. Um, and something I've just noticed with bias effects in general is I feel like the highs are a little too intense. So typically I'm going to like cut the highs a little bit like that. So something like this. Yeah, so that's the kind of tone I like to get out of it. Yeah, so something like that. And something that's really cool with bias effects is you can actually add a like to where you're going through two amps. And what I've been doing is with the second one, I put it on this British rock, um, which if you can't tell, it's modeling like an orange amp, um, which is kind of like a Marshall type sound. Anyway, so with this, I'm gonna take the gain down a little bit. I don't want it to be that intense. Um, and then with this, I actually like to cut the bass because I feel like with this amp, Man, the mouse is not as as good as using your fingers or the Apple Pencil. I'll tell you that right now. But at least y'all can see what I'm doing. Um, and as always, man, <laughs> I'm trying to take some of the trouble out. Um, probably not as much as I did with the other amp. Um, something like that. Let's see. I think I'm actually going to put a little gain back in. The reason I like to stack, th stack these two amps is because I like how the British Rock amp breaks up a little bit, but I like how the uh, Match amp has like a real nice clean tone. So you end up having like this, 
this this tone that's breaking up a little bit, but you still have like that really clear, clean tone coming through. So, so something like that. Yeah, so something like that is what I like to do. Of course, you guys should experiment, figure out exactly what you like. So from here, at least in my mind, the next thing I do is I'm going to I'm going to add a drive and this is my personal favorite um and I want it to be right here and I'm going to take the gain way down I the reason I like to use like this drive and I'm going to typically leave this on as like my it's buzzing a little bit with it on but um I'm going to typically leave this on as like my clean tone and the reason I like to do that is the clone drive, which it's modeled after like a clone. Um, and another pedal that's known for this is like the tube screamer, but what they, they boost your mids and something I've just realized over the years of setting up boards is you want, you want your main tone to have like a good amount of mids in there because that's what makes like a guitar stand out in the mix. So well, at least different people have different opinions about that, but that's, that's my thoughts on it. Um, so yeah, so that's how I like my guitar to sound just like the simplest, like at its base level, something like that. And what's cool about this tone is when you dig in, it's going to break up more. And then if you play softly, it's going to like let those notes kind of stand out. So, so this is like basics, um, something like this. The next thing I like to do is add a compressor. So we're gonna add this one in. We're gonna put it before the drive. I like to put the compressors before the drive. Um, it just kind of smooths everything out a little bit. Um, let's see, but the, I know that this compressor has a lot of output for what I want. And I don't like it to be too much. I just I just like a little bit of compression to be there. Um, I'm actually gonna drop this a little bit. Actually, I think I need to take some drive out of this. I know it's already really low. Um, I don't like it to be that hot as my like clean. Okay, so so let's see. Um, there we go. And what we're going to do is turn this on. Let's see how that sounds. I don't want it to like completely take the dynamics away, but it does kind of make that softer stuff still like come out of, you know, come out at you a little more. So. I don't know why, okay, that little note <laughs> was annoying me. This is like the stuff that I would pretty much leave on all the time. Um, the next thing I like to do is I like to add another drive to give me like a second uh, gain stage. And so this one goes behind it. I personally like using the stab drive. It, it's, um, it's, it's like an OCD. And something about that pedal um, and that this simulation does really well too. It's just a really transparent drive. And I like, the reason I like using it is because it doesn't like, it doesn't color your tone a lot. So you're going to like maintain a lot of the tone of whatever your first pedal is. Like I like to use like the clone drive or like the tube screamer. Um, and this is going to retain a lot of that tone but just give you some more dirt on it. Um, man, this mouse is like not working the best <laughs> in here. Anyway, let's see how this sounds. But see how it kind of retains that, the tone from the, the clone, but just, just dirties it up. So that's what I like. I'm actually going to give it a little bit of a volume boost because I like it to go up in volume when I kick this on. Um, let's see how that is. There we go. 
So, so that's, um, I like to, I like to kick this one on and off based on what I'm going for. So most of the time I'm going to leave it off and just use like this tone, but say if I want to do like a solo or if I just need to play a really big rhythm part, I'm going to kick this on, you know, and, and just let that come in. Um, so the next thing that I like to set up is delays. So let's go to the delay section. And personally, I really like, I always want to drag it on. You just click it though. You just click on it and it's going to drop it in wherever the last area you are messing with the pedal at is. So I like to use the analog one. I, I, I just like, um, of course, everything in here is digital, but I like how analog delay pedals kind of give you like a little bit warmer of a feeling. Um, so, so I set it, this, this knob right here is how you set it to like what, uh, what time signature it is. So when you put it right here to the, man, I'm going all over the place. When you put it right here to the one slash eight, um, D puts it on a dotted eighth setting, which is my favorite delay setting. Cause it kind of gives you that slap back after you hit every, like any note you hit. I'm going to turn the mix down because I, I feel like I feel like the mix is typically better somewhere around five. Um, so something like that. And you see how it has that slap back? I'm going to tap the tempo in real quick. So that's something cool about bias effects is you can tap the tempo in right there. You can also click here and do it right here, um, which I did it way too fast. <laughs> okay, so let's... Uh, so that's how I like that's how I like my delay setup where it does that slap back thing um, and typically I'll actually set up a second delay do a digital one and I'll put this one to um, put this one to a quarter note and what I like to do is put them behind each of the amps. And this actually has a really cool effect. Um, this one is too loud and I need to take some of, let's see, my bad. I, I Let me, I like putting the like the wet to about there. And then I want my feedbacks to be about two and a half. That's what, that's typically what I found. But you can see this is like your dotted eighth with a quarter note delay, kind of like that U2 vibe. And it gives you that, you know, um, but typically I'm just going to leave it on dot, uh, like on, uh, the analog with dotted eighth, but I'm going to leave this one in just in case, um, you can switch between the two if you want to have a dotted eighth and a quarter note delay. So the next thing I would do is add a reverb. Um, I like the, um, Man, I was clicking the screen with my fingers. My bad, guys. I wanted to show you all exactly what I'm doing. Um, so, so I'm going to go up to the hall. This is the reverb I like the most, at least on this pedal. Um, and I don't want it to be too strong. I just, I just like having a little bit of reverb. Um, that's probably a little stronger than I want it to be, actually. So let's see. Let's see about that. something like that so so guys at this point this is what I would probably consider like just like the bare bones essential pedal rig and um, just to, just to show you a few other things where I would put things if I was adding other stuff um, so if I was going to add a volume pedal, which for some reason they put that in the like equalizer section, I don't know why they would put it there. Anyway, man, I keep wanting to drag it in. Anyway, click it. So if I was going to add a volume pedal, I would typically add it right here. Um, because I like when the, like when the volume pedal doesn't affect my gain stages and you can just kind of like turn it on and off. Um, 
I'll be showing you how to set that up with, uh, with the Bluetooth controller in my next video. But if I added a volume pedal, this is typically where I add it. Um, if I was going to add some other kind of effect, like say, um, like a phaser or something, I would add it right here before the delays. That's typically where I would want that to be. Um, of course, that's all a preference thing. I feel like, but I feel like that is one of those kind of, those are like. So typically I would add like phasers and choruses in this area. Um, something you can do just to get a little bit different sound out of those, put it right before your distortion. So that's a kind of cool sound too, if, if, if you like that. I think typically I would put those things over here. Um, let's try a chorus real quick, just because I'm not a big fan of the phaser. Let's turn off the the drive here. But just in my opinion, anything that's kind of like time based or adds to the ambience of your sound, it's going to be better afterwards. It's similar to like setting up an effects loop. You could think of it like that. Is this is all the stuff that's going into your amp? This is all the stuff that's in your like effects loop. Um, so reverbs, delays, all that stuff, at least in my opinion, is going to be better back here because your amp is going to color that sound. So guys, that's, uh, that's, that's my recommendations on how to set up a pedal board or pedal rig inside of bias effects. I'm, I'm going to upload this to, um, to like the cloud because you can share pedal boards and stuff. So if you guys are interested in taking this as like a template to build your own effects, um, you can go and download this. It's called JD YouTube. I think it's going to work just like that. Anyway, I've never done that before. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I'll do that some other time. But as far as this video, that's it. I'll be doing some more tutorials on how to record with this setup and um, how to set up your blue board. So if you want to use this for like live performances and stuff But anyways, if you haven't, uh, please subscribe so that you can see those other videos um, I'll catch you guys in the next one